Are you thinking about homesteading but you just don't know where to start? Today we're doing a coffee chat on some of the things that we learned during our first year homesteading. So we're gonna do a few questions and answers. I'm Danielle, this is my husband Chris, and we're part of the Splitterl Farm. We redo new content every Wednesday and Sunday of starting our homestead. And today we're talking about the first year of homesteading. I wrote out a full list of questions for us to go over. Are you excited? Yeah. Feel free to uh, sum submit some questions down in the comments and we'll do that for the next video. So let's get started. What did you think about before we started homesteading? Like, What were your thoughts on what it would be like? I had minimal experience to it. We watched a bunch of videos um, like I'm sure all of us have. And I thought that it was going to be very easy to just hop into it uh, naively. Um, and that, you know, right after you get started, you know, you set up a basic garden and you, you got your animals, then everything's just going to be taking care of itself. And uh, definitely was wrong there because there's a, a lot of maintenance um, in homesteading and there's a steep learning curve um, that you're always kind of like growing and learning along the way. So, what about you? Yeah, I definitely agree. I was like, we'll just set it up. It won't be that hard. We actually had a family member that also set one up and it seemed very easy from the outside to do everything. So I felt that'd be the same. I also like money didn't pop into my head, how expensive things would be. I was like, oh, farmers do this. It won't be that hard. So I just didn't think about that at all. But it is very expensive when you start to think about infrastructure, and we got our house and there was a barn and 10 acres. And I think we were like, okay, let's go. But is this soil going to be good for gardening? Or do you have to prep that? Which is like a lot of time, a lot of effort into that. And then we had a barn on our land, but we had to do a lot of work and effort into that to make it safe for animals. Um, so I think money, time, and yeah, definitely just like, there's a lot to know. So make sure that you're really paying attention and researching beforehand. All right, question number two. What was your goal going into homesteading? Uh, well, we got into homesteading during a obviously crazy time, the pandemic and all that stuff, um, with meat shortages on the shelves and people uh, worried about what you're gonna be able to get. Um, so one of the things that we went into the idea of was being able to provide for yourself, um, mm -hmm. be a little bit more self-sustainable, be a little more greener, be a little bit more knowledgeable of what we're putting in our bodies because we're trying to escalate and grow as much as we can. Um, but obviously that's a, also a steep curve with where we're at, um, learning and getting it all up. A main goal for me on also being self-sufficient, but also how can we create a greener footprint? How can we be more minimalistic with what we need? How can we learn to use our land and reuse our resources instead of just like always buying things and disposing of them? So that was definitely a big part of me and I try to live a very minimalistic lifestyle, I think. <laughs> it's definitely hard because there is a lot of things that I always want, but how can we kind of reduce that urge as well? And that brings us on to our next question, which is, what do you think was the easiest part of getting started on a homestead? Uh, deciding that we wanted to do it. <laughs> Everything else was hard. <laughs> Everything else is hard and is still continuously hard to provide all of that extra like effort. Um, having a you know, full-time jobs and families and friends that you want to spend time with um, there's a lot of time that gets involved in starting something from scratch. So, um, pretty much our, my body's always tired. We don't have the tools for stuff, but it, it's, it's definitely rewarding and to cool, uh, like a cool experience to like learn along the way and, and see things change. Even, um, even the small wins are wins for us. Definitely. And I think to me, the easiest part to go off of that is once you have a routine, just keeping that routine, definitely getting to a routine and be like, okay, every morning we have to do this. But once you start creating automations in your farm and you start having things just feel like second nature, now things run easier. So definitely once you have automations and just a routine, it's easy 
coming up with that idea while studying it was very easy for sure next question is what is the hardest part of starting a homestead in your opinion well, i'm gonna say time management because Ooh. trying to find the time to work on all the projects that are required for building the homestead as well as maintaining everything that you already put together um, definitely forget about the aspect of uh, the maintenance thinking that once it's done and set up you could just check it off the list but that is very wrong um, you will have to do reoccurring maintenance on your items and things go wrong all the time so finding time to uh, push forward and make sure everything else is good yeah I'd say the hardest part or the part that I dread most is cleanup yeah. <laughs> I hate the cleanup we every week we'll clean out all the cages and re put in the bedding and refill all the things that need to be refilled and that's probably like my least Nasty favorite job. aspect. It's very smelly. There are so many bugs yeah. and it's so gross, but it looks very nice after. So it's a very rewarding to have once it's done, but it is probably like my least favorite heart. I don't know if it's the hardest, but it is by sure my least favorite. And I dread and I try to make you do it all the time. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think that people definitely don't realize that there's a lot of work involved with just animals, you know? So like making sure that they have a healthy environment um, for them is a like a, a weekly event. And every day you're checking on them, you're, you know, you're providing food, you're doing water, even with automated systems, you just wanna like double check, make sure everything's clean. It, it's, a, it's a good environment for these animals that you've taken on. Um, so yeah. Yeah, and their health is really important to us as well. We wanna make sure that our rabbits and our chicken and our quail aren't getting sick and so you do have to look after them and be vigilant on everything that's going on. Okay, next question, which I think we have a lot to talk about on is would you change the order of the things that we did? Hmm. Maybe let's first go into the order of what we did first. So we did a little bit of research probably, bought a house with land. <laughs> So I probably would have researched more. I would have started watching YouTube videos and reading content on homesteading and farming way before yeah. we thought about it. Maybe done some more research on but you say all city time. laws. Yeah, uh, de definitely, but you say it all the time that you should just get started. And I agree with that. And it was just, sure. you should just hop into it and see where it goes. Cause I mean, we're having fun, so. That's true. I do, <laughs> I do think it's worth just getting started. Um, and then we started, we did start pretty quickly. We started working on our house and we got meat rabbits at the very beginning. We got chickens, quail. So what else would you change? Well, I think that the first day that we moved here, we started ripping out all of the, uh, the, sh the shrubs and uh, cleaning out a path in the woods. Um, for whatever reason, that was like my main goal was not even setting things up, but uh, clearing a path through the woods so we could take like walks with dogs. Um, I think I would have put that a second measure and went to the park um, so that we can speed up the, uh, the start up, the ramp up time for our garden and chickens and all that because um, the the garden we didn't get to until later in the year so we had a much more minimal like harvest and, and than, than we than i would have expected um, just because we didn't prioritize that yeah i definitely agree with you the garden is probably it takes a lot of time and love and care but it's a little bit easier to probably start with that and just start getting animals first yeah. and to worry about other things. And it's nice to be able to set up that infrastructure beforehand. I remember even when we first started, we were on a bunch of Facebook groups and people were like, you need to get automation set up and then talk about adding more animals. And I think that is really key. And we have videos on different automated systems that we use that I can link down below. And those are, Quail cage. So important. <laughs> the quail cage? Best thing ever. Lifesaver. Love, Love it. If you're going if you're going to have quail, don't buy your own. I mean, don't build your own. I mean, you can go for it. Have have a blast. But this quail cage is awesome. Um, the the eggs roll down. I mean, I just love it because it's the easiest thing to clean and it's just yeah. comes into pieces. It's great. Oh my gosh, we to clean it, we just power washed everything and it's so clean. 
the water does its own thing, the food, it, there's so many automations and it just makes farming easier in use so that you can pay attention to the animals and to growing your farm. So that's pretty cool. The quails are definitely the easiest of everything and the chickens and turkeys are free range and that's, that's harder than the, these quail. Next question, I'm gonna kind of tie these together. So what's your favorite and least favorite part of homesteading? So first your favorite and then your least favorite. Um, I think that they're almost the same. Like, <laughs> so my, my favorite aspect is just being outside doing I'm always happy just like cutting wood, you know, just doing doing something simple um, and manual that just like gets you your thoughts calm down. You're you're just out there with your land and trying to your end goal is providing for yourself, and it feels and good. And your family. Well, yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> yes, my, myself and my family, and um, but at the same time, it's also the bane of my existence sometimes like it's just very frustrating when something doesn't quite go right i would say my well my least favorite part is definitely the cleaning up the film it's definitely my least favorite part and then my favorite part is like the small successes so i think our garden when we first started to get our first eggplant and our first squash. That was really exciting. And good. knowing that like you put so much work into it and everything started off as a tiny little seed and then you're eating. We had zucchinis that were huge. That was really cool and rewarding. When our rabbits have any litters of kits, that's the cutest thing ever. And you're there with them and they're so loving and they let you touch them and help them with their kits and that is, so it's just, you feel like you're a part of their family as well, which is really cool. And then um, every morning with the eggs, going in and being able to just grab eggs every morning and have fresh eggs is pretty cool. So I think those are my favorite parts is just actually reaping the rewards of everything that you worked through. When we got our chickens, it's weeks before they start laying eggs. So it's really hard during that time because you're caring for all these animals and you're not seeing any reward or you're caring for your garden and nothing's happening. There's dirt. Yeah. <laughs> and then it starts to grow and it's just really exciting. It feels really good. It's pretty awesome. What, what, and the, uh, the incubation process is really cool. I think that's one of my favorite things to see, just like them hatching is really interesting. Yeah, and we're incubating some quail right now, which are from the eggs of our quail, so. We're very excited to see what happens there. Next one. What, okay, so we've been homesteading for around a year right now. What would what do you think you'd like to accomplish in the next year? And what do you think you'd like to accomplish in the next five years? So I would like to expand our garden significantly. Um, Definitely. And we actually, we've been drawing up a bunch of stuff and we're gonna do a video on how to start planning your own garden, so where to position it, how big to make it, make sure that you're actually providing enough yeah. for your family, and we're really excited to expand ours, say. So. Yeah, that, that's definitely uh, important because when you're putting five zucchinis in a spot that the zucchinis are only supposed to be like two feet apart, that's it's probably not gonna be good. So uh, stay tuned for the uh, planning video where Danielle's awesome research has uh, helped us out there. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so once we have the garden set up, that's gonna be great. Uh, the plan would be to have a fence around um, one portion of our property so that we can keep both the uh, garden sectioned off in there so that uh, deer aren't coming in and eating our crops. Um, and, and any predators, really. Yeah, and, yeah. The, and the predators um, coming in for the chickens also or whatever animals we have. I think that if not next year, then within the next five years, uh, we'll definitely start um, toying around with the idea of different animals. We'll, we'll give a shot to uh, pigs and uh, and y'all really want sheep. I so, really want sheep. <laughs> so we'll, we'll give we'll give those a try um, after we've done a little bit more research in, and figured out um, how how we can perform that process successfully. Because um, you definitely don't want to take on too much uh, without being prepared for it. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. I think in the next year, really growing out our garden, learning more about gardening. I think 
we came from the city. We didn't know as much. We had little kitchen herb gardens. So really getting into more knowledge on that and doing some more research and learning a lot more about that, I'm really excited for. And um, then focusing on bigger animals and how we want to create more of a community maybe around our farm. I, I definitely think I want to get into at some point um, doing like farm sharing. Sh farm sharing. I know we have a lot of friends in the area that would definitely love to have some of our fresh vegetables and products for my animals. So getting into that and just seeing how we can grow it will be really exciting. We've just talked a lot about what we would want to do and our goals and what we've accomplished in the past year. But I think it's really important coming from a year of learning to share some of our thoughts on what we, a lesson we would give you guys. So as anyone that's looking to start homesteading or farming, we wanna give you a little bit of advice. So I'm gonna let you think on what you wanna do and I'll give my piece of advice because I can see your, yeah. your thoughts are thinking. So I would say my biggest piece of advice is definitely to just start. I know that's contradictory to what I was saying before of like researching, but I think that researching is a start. We're about to head into winter and you can really hunker down and read and learn a lot in this time and start to think about what your goals are and being able to plan things out. It is so easy to, once you have land and once you have a place that you can start to just throw everything in. And I think that's probably what a lot of people do is they're just like, let's get a goat, let's get a sheep, let's get an alpaca. But you don't have to do everything at once. It's all gonna be there next year. So think about what you really want first. Like what products do you eat? What does your family eat? What do you really need? And like, what would you like to start doing and do that first? And then, so maybe it's just like, we have a lot of herbs start an herb garden in your kitchen this winter. And then when the spring comes, have the plants that you wanna start planting outside. Um, or like get chickens, start researching about what your town has. So I think getting started and starting small and then growing it up so that you can manage it. Because if you go in and you just, everything's really expensive. expensive. <laughs> and then start, you start buying all this stuff and you can't handle it or it's just a lot more time than you thought it would be, it's gonna be harder to keep doing it. So start off in small chunks and then you can start growing more exponentially. And once you start getting one animal, it's much easier to figure out what you're gonna do with the rest. But yeah, start slow, but get started. What would you be? I think that's pretty good. Um... <laughs> I, I, I think that uh, you should you should definitely cherish the uh, the small wins, uh, focusing on you know a, a task at a time and just finishing that, making sure it's good, but also having kind of like a, a big picture in mind before you do get started on what your plans are. You know things can change. Um, it, things have changed here a bunch. Like our our garden, we have in one location, and now everything's going to be shifted next year to a completely new spot. T taking a look at, at different things like where the, the sun is on the property, where's the best pot, the spot for your uh, vegetable garden versus your barn, um, things like that, trying to plan it out. Um, and having the right tools uh, is like always the, the best thing. Or friends with the right tools. <laughs> yeah, or friends with the right tools. Tools are, are extremely expensive so doing things smarter is going to save you a lot of time um, but it's also going to be a lot of money so um, where we're doing a lot of things manually that would be completed with a actual tool for the job in a much quicker time frame but uh it's a little the, expensive yeah the machinery the, is expensive yeah the end, end goals usually end up the same or similar just might take a little longer Okay, the last question here is going to be, why do you think it's important to start homesteading now, today? It takes a lot of time to accomplish the end goals of homesteading, of being able to be self-sustainable. It's not a quick thing to turn around. It's gonna be multiple years and a lot of effort. Um, so getting started now just push you one step forward for tomorrow, being there to accomplish your end, end goal. Um, so. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of tests and there's always something else that can be done. So starting now allows you to get to more things. I would say for me starting now is just 
the craziness that we're in this past year i think has taught us so much and one just not being able to leave your house as often is how can you make your house your oasis very true that's definitely something that we've thought about a lot we've done a few vacations but if your house is the place that you want to be the most then like make it like make it amazing and like why do you need to travel as much you can still learn so much in your own area with your family and friends so i think that's been one thing especially with travel bans where you can't even go places and then number two inflation that we're having lately prices are going to go up prices of food and beverages and vegetables are already starting to go up. There isn't as much ability to ship things. There aren't as many drivers and the cargo ships are like not able to come in as often. So how can we create our own food and become more self-sustainable? I think that was more of your goal at the very beginning of this. And now going through the process, I definitely agree. There's so many things I think about and how can we like really live off the grid? How can we have solar power? Because our power has gone out more this year Sometimes. than our entire lives. And it's not just where we live because a lot of our family has had the same situations happen. We've had more flooding than we've seen in years. There's been crazy things with the weather that are happening in the area that we live in, in the Northeast that never happened. So tornadoes and hurricanes. <laughs> yeah, it's never like, even knew that happened. Out if here. we can control things, if we can can our own goods and make sure that we have our own supply of food without relying on the supermarket, which some of the aisles are completely barren when you go in them because just there isn't as much coming in. Like I think that is makes a huge difference, and it just teaches you to love the earth and everything that the earth gives us because it is an amazing, amazing planet. But yeah, those are all the questions for today. Definitely comment down below if you have more questions that we can help answer. We can always do another coffee session. We love coffee and we love to talk. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it for today. Unless you got something else to say. Nope. It's all okay. from Split Hour Farm. Bye.